Hello and welcome to SBS Academy, the digital space where you get an opportunity to learn English with Shujurita. With quality content and that too absolutely free of cost, this online portal will enable you to be efficient in communication and soft skills for success in the corporate world. Like, follow and subscribe to the portal on Facebook and YouTube for SBS tips, reels, shorts and detailed videos on communicative English and soft skills. We appreciate you taking out time for watching our videos and we have full consideration that your schedule is precious. This is a lengthy lesson and preparing one long video on the full topic would not have been a feasible option. To do full justice to the lesson and not compromise on the quality of the study material, we have decided to split the content into separate parts. The link of the other part of the lesson has been attached in the description box. Do watch both the videos from first to last to become more empowered with employability skills only at SP's Academy. This is a list of non-verbal cues to be covered in part 2 of the lesson in this video. We have already covered a section of the content in part 1. Please find the link of the last video in the description box and go through it for a better understanding of the lesson. Part 2 of the lesson in this video completes the bipartite series. The second set of non-verbal cues include taking up space on the camera, paying attention, observing clues, noticing the recipient's body language, prioritizing empathy and understanding, taking pause literally and figuratively, learning from past presentation and questioning yourself. How to avoid miscommunication in virtual interviews as a result of the wrong use of hand gestures. Pay attention to where the other meeting attendees are from to avoid miscommunication. For example, making an OK sign with your hand is considered rude in some countries. Having your hand obscuring your face can be really distracting. Try to avoid remaining still throughout the entire virtual meeting so as not to appear robotic. Hand and body gestures showing an air of authority may not be appropriate in all meeting formats. At times, this approach could actually be counterproductive. Instead, a softer or a milder approach may be more conducive to projects hinged on cooperation and teamwork. Now it's time for some more do's and don'ts regarding some other gestures to be followed during virtual communication. Touching your face throughout the meeting suggests that you are nervous. This also includes playing with your hair, scratching your nose, chewing your lower lip. Avoid this while attending virtual meetings as you don't want to come across as insecure or nervous. Not your head when you agree or you don't with what the other person says shows that you were actively listening. Keep your hands on your lap or use them to write down notes if needed. Instead of rubbing your eyes, covering your mouth, try to raise your eyebrows to show interest. Your hands shouldn't come near your face. Take notes to keep your hands busy or at most you can use them to hold a coffee mug. Eye contact is very important when you are having a face-to-face -face meeting. So remember, you need to maintain this even if you are not with the people directly. Look at the camera, not the screen. The proper conduct is to look at the camera because you want to simulate looking into your co-worker's eyes. Since looking at the camera lens doesn't feel natural while talking during meetings, you could alternate between looking directly at the camera and the computer screen at your co-workers. Although it's not easy, it might be worth a try if you want your co-workers to get the impression that you are looking at them in eye. However, 
be careful while conducting international virtual meetings due to cultural differences you might end up offending someone in us spain greece and the arab countries it's perfectly acceptable and desirable to maintain eye contact as it reinforces your position and message however in japan eye contact is considered rude as a matter of fact japanese people avoid looking at the eye instead they look at the speaker's neck so be careful whom you are having a virtual meeting with and then act accordingly keep your eye contact just below the camera staring directly at the screen where the person's eyes are can tire you out while looking directly into the camera can be a bit hypnotizing use your peripheral focus to stay engaged with the speaker while listening to their words of course some people might not enjoy sharing their video on a call but it's important to remember that the ability to connect visually is one of the most noteworthy advantages of virtual meetings eye contact establishes social bonding resulting in a closer connection with other callers this helps people feel noticed signaling that they are important and not ignored so obviously only sharing a video is not enough we need to make active eye contact balance looking at the faces of others while looking at the camera lens so that others can see your eyes though this is against intuitive human behavior and can take some time to get used to looking at the camera usually requires looking away from the faces of the meeting participants make sure to smile when you're attending virtual meetings even if they are with the people you already know or a new client or employee but make sure that you smile when you greet them this will enable the conversation to run smoothly and be positive and constructive from the start to the finish but do not grin excessively or wear a sullen look it may come across as fake if you smile too much or cold if you don't smile at all just remember you want to act as if you were there with the person face to face and not treat it like it's virtually through a camera however once again be careful while dealing with colleagues from different cultures in some culture smiling is perceived as a sign of foolishness as with the russians poles and norwegians take up the camera space in such a way that it makes you look engaged and confident enough to communicate effectively in your virtual meeting to do this you should position yourself close enough to the camera but not too close where it may come across like you are invading the personal space of the recipients high power poses are open and relaxed and low power poses are closed and guarded change your body language according to the progress of the virtual conversation so that it makes you appear more confident avoid multitasking while you're attending a virtual meeting this means you should not check your phone or look around the space that you're in be focused on the person and keep them engaged throughout the meeting You should not come across as though you're uninterested in the conversation and not paying enough attention. Checking emails during your virtual meetings can be distracting for the audience. Multitasking or task switching doesn't at least work well in virtual conversation. So forget about that email while on a virtual call with your coworkers. Aside from looking disrespectful towards your colleagues, checking your email on your phone means you are not fully listening to the speaker, which really shows lack of respect. The only multitasking that you can or you should do during a virtual meeting is sipping on your coffee and listening to the speaker. The main rule is not to do anything you would do in an in-person meeting. focus on the other person do not use your phone 
keep the camera and microphone on to generate more attention. Keep a note of gestural cues around you and check for commitment. Virtual meetings have an agenda and require attendees to commit to a course of action. At least that should be the case. So, you should be able to recognize discrepancies between verbal and non-verbal language. For instance, when someone says yes, but their body language says otherwise. Make sure everyone understands you. If you want to be sure everyone is paying attention to what you are saying, check if they are nodding their heads. It's a sure shot way to know that they are getting your point. If they on the other hand crinkle their nose or frown, they are probably trying to work things out in their mind and need clarifications. Do not fail to notice the recipient's body language by trying to read the virtual room on your computer. To improve your body language, you need to pay attention to the other party as well. Recognize when someone else wants to speak. Pay attention to the subtle signs your co-workers may be sending you, such as removing hair away from their face, adjusting their glasses, or scratching a particular area on their face. If you notice something like that, chances are that they are trying to attract your attention. Prioritize empathy and understanding as the sudden transition to the digital workplace has been a challenging process for many people from both the psychological and the technical standpoint. At the same time, many individuals are under stress in their daily lives due to COVID-19. So it's important to align your communication strategy with compassion and empathy in mind. Because of the pandemic and the subsequent emotional upheaval, people crave to be understood and expect to relate to each other with empathy, kindness and warmth. Warm signals like starting with a smile are appreciated unless you have a genuine piece of bad news to share. Take pause during non-verbal communication in the virtual space. This is a part of paralinguistics and here you have to remember that you have to take pause very seriously both literally and figuratively. The ability to masterfully slow down a conversation and provide lengthy gaps between individual points can be a powerful communication skill. The power of pause cannot be emphasized enough, especially in a virtual meeting. When you have made a point, pause. Give people time and their brain to evaluate and consider what you have said because they need that extra time that they wouldn't necessarily need in a face-to-face -face encounter. A pause can act as a way of emphasizing a point in the conversation. The role of pause in virtual communication becomes all the more important, especially when you give a slight hesitation before continuing a thought as this will give others the time to reflect on those ideas before moving on. These same principles hold true when one is in the role of a listener in a virtual meeting. By presenting the body language associated with listening and contemplative pause. When someone asks a question, a pause before you give answer gives the impression and hopefully an accurate impression that you are really considering the question and you are not coming up with a canned answer. Even after carefully considering the impact of our nonverbal and verbal communication, there is still room for errors. To understand better the way an individual communication is interpreted by others, Record your standard speech delivery on a video call. Use a socially distanced video chat with a friend to understand habits and refine your non-verbal cues. While we are involved in what we are saying, we often forget how we look when we are saying it. So taking a look at yourself is one of the best things that you can do. By muting the conversation and simply watching the non-verbal cues, 
people may be able to make notes about nervous tendencies or old habits. The cues we use socially may be applied well to our professional lives. Retrospection is a very important strategy in virtual communication so as to take a look back at your body language and make out the points you need to improve. Throughout the day, try to monitor your progress. Ask yourself the following questions about your performance. How was I perceived at the meeting? Could I have done something differently? Were people really interested in paying attention to what I was saying? Did I listen well to others? As you answer these questions, your self-awareness will increase. Set aside time to refocus before virtual meetings. In a day brimming with back-to-back -back meetings, it can be all too easy to click the next conference hyperlink without much forethought. In the era of Zoom burnout and video conference fatigue, it is imperative to take a moment to reflect on the next presentation and consider the lasting impact of one's non-verbal communication ahead of time. Before you get on to that meeting, take a few minutes to think why this meeting is important, why it's genuinely something that you are invested in, and that will help you to align your gestures. Thanks for watching the video. Like, share and comment on what else you would like us to cover. Subscribe to the channel on YouTube and follow the page on Facebook. For SBS tips, reels, posts, videos on communicative English and soft skills. Happy learning!